Good evening, everyone. This is Father Brett here at Holy Cross, and tonight we are having another of our Ask and Answered sessions. Tonight's question kind of goes off an earlier question we had. The question is, why do we have Holy Days of Obligation? And I forget the second part. But basically, why do we have Holy Days of Obligation? And um, why? Do, how do they decide? What are they? So why are they, why are they there? So. Why do we have Holy Days of Obligation? goes back to a question we had earlier where we talked about uh, what solemnities, feasts, and memorials were. And we said that, or I had said that those are given to different saints' feast days and also to different moments in the life of Jesus. The mysteries, as we call them, some of the great mysteries in the life of, of Christ, his life, death, and resurrection. And so those specifically... The mysteries of Christ's life, death, and resurrection are celebrated with great solemnity. They are given a lot of awesome things happen. There are a lot of, we, we kind of give them more reverence, more kind of stuff happening in the liturgy, in the mass. You know, we sing more, we do different things because of their importance for us. The mysteries of Christ's life, especially his birth, his death, his Epiphany, His Resurrection, the Ascension, and then Pentecost are especially some of those that we can point to that are great mysteries and powerful moments in salvation history, in Christ's life where He brings about salvation for us. And we honor those as solemnities, but not just as solemnities, but many of those, those type of Celebrations are celebrated as what's called Holy Days of Obligation. And they are done so to give them honor so that the community of believers can come together as one to worship and to remember and to celebrate those events with great fervor and great praise and great devotion. So some Holy Days of Obligations are obviously Christmas. Um, you would put Easter, but East, since Easter falls on Sunday, you don't normally call it a holy day of obligation, but you could consider it that. Epiphany is a holy day of obligation. That's when we remember a few things. When the Magi came to see Christ, the baby Jesus. We remember when the shepherds came to see him. We remember when um, the Epiphany also, in some ways, celebrates our Lord's baptism, where he's kind of making an epiphany, a revelation of himself to those who were there. You think of um, think of the Ascension, which for us is moved to Sunday, so we would go to the Ascension anyway, but in many parts of the world, the Ascension falls on a Thursday, so that was, is considered a Holy Day of Obligation. You can also think of All Saints Day, which is a Holy Day of Obligation, and that is that because obviously it's a feast honoring all of the saints together and what the saints represent to us. They are witnesses to us of living the life of Christ, of living the life of a disciple. And so we honor them in a very particular way. And so we gather on holy days because of their significance to our faith to what they mean for us having been redeemed and saved by Christ and because of just their importance to the life of the church and to the life of Christians in general. And so that in a nutshell is are the holy days, why we have them, what, are the, what is their significance. That's a few of the ones that we, we, uh, we know of. So like Epiphany, Christmas, All Saints Day, the Immaculate Conception, which is remembering how God preserved Mary from original sin from the moment of her conception, and she was conceived immaculate without sin. And so we honor that because of Mary's role and the particular grace she received because of her role in the life of Christ and in bringing about salvation history. Also know that her assumption is also a holy day of obligation, which is on August 15th. Immaculate Conceptions on December 8th, Assumptions on August 15th. And those are, that one in particular is reminding us of our own destiny, what awaits us and of the, the promise that Christ has given to us, that he will fulfill it. 
and that is shown to us the first fruits of that the first kind of evidence of that is in mary who was assumed body and soul into heaven and so that is kind of in a nutshell what the holy days and their importance um i apologize i can't quite remember the second question but i hope that this has been helpful to in your understanding of these days why they're there what's their importance and you know why we celebrate them differently than any other day of the year and so i hope that is enlightening and help you to grow closer to the lord and i pray that you'd have a good night and a good week and god bless you all peace